Okay, great. Thank you so much, Gene. I appreciate it, and thank you, Mike, for uh, sponsoring all of this here. Um, Bill DeRosa, and uh, you'll notice on the screen there, you can also tweet your questions um, by using uh, pound TF web on Twitter if you uh, feel like using that medium. But we'll go on here because uh, we've got about a half hour, and we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, so first of all, who are these guys? Well, I'm Bill DeRosa. I'm the guy on the left there. And in the background, who you're not hearing, though, is my business partner and friend, Eric Granado. And he's going to be in the background answering questions, the Twitter, uh, Facebook, all these other things. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, read through this if you like, but we're going to start going on. All right, so today we're going to be doing getting the very most out of Facebook. And like I said, these slides are going to move pretty quick, so write down any notes that you have anything. I've got a lot, of, lot to cover and a lot of information to give you. So, uh, Why Facebook? The average user has 227 friends. That number is up or down depending on uh, where you're getting your news source from. Um, the average Facebook user spends about 50 minutes per day on Facebook. If they're using a smartphone, you can pretty much double that. Uh, you see them staying online at Starbucks, uh, pretty much everywhere, just on their phone tapping away for Facebook. It's got a very demographically diverse user base, which is great for businesses because there's a huge amount of people that uh, you can grab in every demographic targeting. Um, it's, it started as a B2C um, type of platform, but it's growing quickly into a B2B, and that will become apparent as time goes on. And, of course, it's the largest social network. It's got nearly a billion people on this one platform, which to me is outstanding. All right, so we're going to start with Gene's lovely page, uh, which he was gracious enough to allow us to start picking apart. And this is Media Life's Facebook page. And you'll notice it's, it's generic. It's the same as most people start off with. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of companies just keep going on with this page. Um, but we're going to show you some things that you could do to really improve it. First thing you'll notice in the top left-hand corner is a small sidebar graphic. Now, on the next page, you're going to see what size it can go, but notice how small and how little space it actually takes up on the Facebook page. Uh, right underneath that, there's no tabs or apps that have been added. So again, it's just the generic tabs and apps that Facebook gives you. We didn't land into, onto a landing page, which we're going to show you that soon as well. Um, so we landed right into conversation. So when you jump onto this page, you're not really sure who, or who Media Life Magazine is or what they do. And the, the landing page is going to help with that, and you'll see that shortly. And you'll notice there's no engagement. There's a lot of posts going on, but there's really no conversation. As well, you'll notice the Info tab. Um, just uh, basic information was put in there, but we want to definitely extrapolate out on that. So overall, you can see it's a basic generic starting page. So what we want to start doing is we want to start creating professional fan pages for yourself. First thing you, you always do is notice now that's a full-size sidebar graphic. The size that you want to hit is 180 pixels wide by 540 pixels high. And what you want to do is you want to put some of your contact information on there. You'll notice right on that landing, that uh, sidebar graphic is our phone number, our email, some of the other media we're on. That way, no matter where people go on our fan page, they have the information right there in front of them. It also gives you a little bit more extrapolation of who you are and what you do. You'll also notice right underneath the sidebar graphic, it's very rich in outbound links and applications. There's a lot of places for people to go. There's a lot for them to interact with. As well, on the right-hand side there, you'll notice we have a lot of interaction, a um, bunch of comments, a bunch of likes, things like that. That's what we're targeting. Okay, so now you'll notice right here on the Info tab, uh, very rich in information. There's a lot of information up there. We filled it out. Ours is probably a little too much. Uh, you don't need to go that crazy. Um, but you'll notice that there's a lot of information all listed out here. And as well underneath there, very rich in web links. Every platform or every website or anything that you are on, it should be in those links right there. And we'll talk a little bit about the Welcome to Landing page. You'll notice earlier when I showed you uh, Mike's page, we landed right on the wall. Now, what a welcome page done, and these are becoming more and more popular just because simply it really makes your page look professional. It's branded. And the other thing is it's a who you are, a what you do, benefits, and a call to action. And you'll notice at the top, right at the top of our landing page, it says, like us now so you can love us later. That's the call to action. You, you do have to remind people to like your page 
sometimes they uh, they forget to like it, or uh, maybe they're not even aware that they have to like it for you know beginning people coming onto Facebook. So it is a call to action. Also, a who you are, what you do, and you can read through there. And of course, you can always visit our Facebook page to see what the landing page looks like. But it's a very professional way uh, for you to show your fa your fan page to people for the first time. All right, the other thing about Facebook is it's the hub. Uh, Facebook has some of the most uh, integrated apps and cross-platform icons and everything else that you can possibly use. Google Plus has introduced this, so they actually have a, a pretty good uh, platform for this now, and YouTube is upgraded. But Facebook is typically the hub for these reasons. You'll notice there's a YouTube tab, a SlideShare tab, on and on, Constant Contact, Pinterest, dozens more. No matter what, there's an app for it, or there's an, a, a, a link to go somewhere else. The best thing about this is if you click on the YouTube tab, they still stay within the platform of Facebook. And that will become apparent when you actually visit our page or you visit pages who have these type of tabs. You'll see right inside your fan page is the application or the platform embedded in there. And the reason we really like this is that people don't have to leave Facebook to go to your YouTube channel. They can watch your videos right within a platform. And statistics bear out that people typically don't like to leave Facebook. If you can embed other platforms within the framework of Facebook, that you'll end up keeping them a little longer. People are chatting with their friends, things like that, and they don't typically want to leave. Uh, Facebook also has great what's called open graph. Uh, you can pretty much install anything on a Facebook page as long as you understand code or you can do any kind of coding or you can hire someone to do code. Well, you'll see on the left-hand side right here, this is called a mini tab website. Um, ours is still in the beta version on our page. Uh, we, we're in the, actually in the process of redoing it. But any of those tabs, and you'll see uh, custom pages has been circled with a red. That's actually a tab. Now if you click on QR codes on our Facebook page, that will open up another page underneath it. So we're basically embedding a mini website within the framework of Facebook, which is really a cool thing to do. Um, and you'll also notice right next to that, to the right, an iframe application. Um, this iframe application, again, you can embed pretty much anything into it. Think of it like a, a single web page that you populate with whatever information that you want. One of the things that we always see and we try and encourage people to do is make sure your personal profile is linked to your fan page. And you'll notice on my uh, personal profile there with a the red circle, Principal at Talking Finger. When you click on that Talking Finger link, it goes to my Facebook page. Um, you'll, I'm sure you've come across uh, profiles where you click on it and it goes to a little briefcase on Facebook. So it's important that you have this linked directly to your fan page. That way uh, anybody who visits you or finds you on Facebook, friends, family, business associates, anybody, they have a way to get from your personal profile right to your fan page. So it does help with a little bit of visibility for your page as well. And speaking of uh, Timeline, um, Timeline is the personal profile. Timeline is coming to a fan page, and it's supposed to be launched tomorrow, or at least we're supposed to be notified about it tomorrow. So nobody is 100% sure what implications this is going to have for landing pages and apps and everything else. Uh, as far as we're reading, everything will stay the same. They'll just be in a newer format. Uh, but Facebook pretty much does whatever they want, so uh, <laughs> we never know. But I'll look for that announcement on our Facebook page tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be listening in on the Facebook conference that they're going to be doing announcements, so we will post up as soon as we have any news about it. All right, one of the most important aspects of your fan page is to claim your URL or your what's called username. Now, what this is, is it makes your Facebook page available for search within Facebook. It's also Google searchable because now you have an actual HTML that Facebook releases to the world once you get beyond the, the default. And it's also a lot easier to print on business cards, ads, literature. And this is what I mean by claim your URL. The default that Facebook gives you, and Media Life is a great example, and you'll see a lot of pages like this. It's facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash company name and then a bunch of numbers. Once you claim your URL, you can see ours right underneath there. Look how clean it is. It's just facebook.com forward slash talking finger. Now to claim your URL, anybody can do this. It's really simple. Go to facebook.com forward slash username. 
And make sure, this is very important, use the bottom section for your page. The top section is for your personal profile, so don't make the mistake of claiming a URL for your personal profile. You want to claim it for your page. So use the bottom section, and it says choose a page. So just make sure you use that. And the other note I want to give you about URLs is you cannot change it. So before you finally accept what the URL is going to be, double check your spelling, everything about it. Because like I said, once you claim it, uh, you're not going to be able to change it. All right, so we're going to move on to actual strategy because while the looks and the functionality of your Facebook is very important, obviously, for a, a professional uh, exposure out there in the world, really the strategy is where everything comes together. And this is where you really get your return on investment or your return on your time. And you must create a strategy with goals. And we basically, so you can see if you're you know, basically using it properly and, and making money on it or some kind of ROI, whatever the ROI is, which we'll get into later, or if you're kind of wasting your money with the investment. So we have four parameters that we typically do. And these are going to be basic. Now define your target audience. We put some basics up here, education, hobbies, career, age, things like that. Now your tar target audience obviously may have different parameters. There might be specifics that within your audience that you're, you wish to target. So it's a good idea to start writing these all down. Take notes about who your, your ideal prospect or your ideal client is. Try and ascertain as much information about what that group is. And write it all down. Then you want to write down what are your goals. Is it brand awareness? Is it building advocacy? Is it building strategic partnership? You have to have some kind of goals of why you're going on Facebook or really for any social media marketing for that for that instance. Um, but get what your goals are. What do you want to do? If it's all of them, great. Then it's all of them. But really try and nail down what your goals are. Write them down. The other question we always ask is, how much time per week can you invest internally? Now, you have to be realistic and you have to be, be specific. You have to think about how long will it take to actually create the content. Um, can you cut back on other marketing? You know, we always sit with people and they still do an email blast every two weeks. Well, maybe do one every three weeks. They still have salespeople who make five cold calls a day. Um, they're doing a lot of ancillary marketing or, or specific marketing that maybe can be cut back a little bit to put a little bit more time into their social media. The other thing is include all personnel that can contribute. Um, smaller companies, if it's only a one or two or three man operation, it gets a little more difficult to really have a, a lot of personnel. But you know, as you get a little larger or larger companies, there's a lot of people that you can draw from who can add, uh, add to the social platforms uh, and Facebook. Let them comment. Now, you don't have to give them direct access to your Facebook page, obviously. Um, you, they can simply submit you things to pop up there. But you know, include those people's time in there. And then how much to outsource? Um, there's a lot of content writers out there who, who work for relatively inexpensive. So if you don't really have a lot of time to write that blog post that needs to go up on Facebook or write a lot of posts, um, you can always hire somebody to do it for pretty inexpensive. Um, but this is what it boils down to is to see how many hours per week you can realistically spend on, on the Facebook page. And then you want to list what other marketing initiatives are in place. Your other online assets, your website, AdWords, your electronic news or your news blast. List all your traditional assets, your newspaper ads, magazine, all printed material. And then list all current social media assets. Obviously Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, anything that you have going on. And you want to make sure that you list these all so that you later on when we get into um, the synergy between the different platforms and the different types of marketing, that way you have a good baseline of where everything is. And it also helps you a little bit with determining where to spend time. You know, and no marketing should be living in a silo, and this is why we write all these things down or we, we really plan on it. Social and traditional are not two different marketing uh, pieces anymore. They're really two pieces that need to be combined in synergy. And the idea is the synergy. And it's a balance between all of them. And I found this little quote a while back, and I really like it. Um, Let advertising offset social media scale issue and allow social media to bring believability back to an advertising campaign. You know, one of the things about social media is it it's, it's moves really 
it moves really slow as far as gaining a lot of people to come and like your pages, in, engage with you, everything else. Uh, whereas traditional media is really quick. You know, you put that newspaper ad out or you put that magazine ad out and you get quick return. Um, you know, people call immediately or email immediately. With the social platforms, it takes a little longer to build an audience. Um, so you let the two synergize to each other. Let the traditional marketing bring the people in quickly and then use the social media to engage with them long term. Now the other thing about Synergy is you want to make sure you add social icons to all newspaper and magazine ads. In fact, it should be on every printed material you create. Um, and you'll see this more and more often. Even on TV now, when you watch uh, TV commercials, you'll notice more and more companies are putting follow us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube. You'll start seeing this more and more on some of the TV commercials. You want to point people to these engagement tools. Same thing when you print out new brochures, um, or if you're going to be going to a trade show and you're printing out new graphics. Put these icons on there to put, bring awareness to the, these platforms. Add the icons to your business cards as well as URLs. Um, same as your phone, email, and website. You know, for years and years we all got so used to putting our website on our business cards and phone numbers and everything else. Well, even if you have to make a two-sided card now, on the back end, put all the social platforms you're on. And make sure you spell out the URLs. We, we see a lot of times people just put uh, the Find Us on Facebook, and they don't have the URL up there, and your company name might be a little different on Facebook. So it's always a good idea to maybe put the, face con, the Facebook icon forward slash and then the page name. And that's why it's important to grab that username URL. You remember earlier, if uh, Mike uh, on Media Life never changes his URL, how would you possibly print that on a business card? It would take forever. Whereas ours is nice and clean. It's just simply facebook.com forward slash talking finger. And this is why it's important to grab the URL for future printing use. All right, now a bunch of people asking about Facebook ads. Now, I love Facebook ads. Uh, the thing about Facebook ads is they're either highly successful or they don't work for you. And the reason is targeting. Now, if you look at some of the ads that we have running, these are actually screenshots of ads that we run. You'll notice a couple of things here. Image size. This is important because you want to fill up as much space on the ad as possible. And the image size that you're looking for on all Facebook ads is 110 pixels wide by 80 pixels tall. That will give you the optimal space within the graphic right there that you want to add. The other things about ads are red and orange seem to work best. Avoid blue. Facebook is very blue, so when you have art within your Facebook ads that have a lot of blue in it, they kind of meld into the background where reds and oranges really stand out. And you could see um, Facebook marketing webinar, the thing for today. It was basically just red text that really stands out on the page. When you see this on the Facebook page, it pops. Um, the other one I have up in the left-hand corner here, that chess. Images that will draw some kind of attention that are interesting, those work as well. People's faces usually work pretty well. Um, now, as far as the success of these ads, you'll see we have three ads running right here. The bottom ad is the most successfully running right now, and the reason is it's very highly targeted. You'll notice if you can read that, it might be a little small for you to read unless you're full screen, but um, realistically I tried nailing down anybody who would possibly be able to use social media marketing in I believe four states. Um, and that is really targeted. I'm targeting people who realistically, um, more so than the general population, are going to want to hear about social media marketing. So we get really great return on investment. Whereas the top one, if you look at that chess one, it's very broadcast. It goes pretty much to everybody in the United States. Uh, actually, that one was, uh, that was the 50 mile, I'm sorry, the Shelton. Um, the middle one, it wasn't as successful for the Facebook webinar because it was just going to four states. But the more targeted you can make it, the better the ads work. And use words in the title and image that speak to the targeted audience. In other words, if you're going to be trying to hit people who are into social media, make sure you mention social media. And that goes across for any ad. Speak to the targeted audience with the words they want to hear. All right, and content is king. This is really where everything comes together. A good strategy includes good content. And we always tell people when you use social platforms, and Facebook especially, you kind of have to wear a couple of different suits. You have to wear a clown suit, you have to wear a three-piece suit, 
and sometimes you have to wear shorts and a t-shirt. And the reason is people want diversity in what your posting are. Your posts need to be engaging. They have to be open-ended conversation. They have to be interesting, educational, fun, even off the wall and contradictory. People don't want to have the same content over and over and over from you. So by mixing it up, and wearing those three different suits that I told you about, it really makes your page come to life and it really humanizes it. And ask questions. Questions are awesome. It, those are the definition of open-ended conversation. The more questions you can ask, what are your thoughts? How do you feel? What's your experience? You know, pretty much every post that you make on the wall it somehow should have an open end to it to engage people to respond to it. Um, because realistically, if they're not going to respond to it, you're kind of wasting your time. And so why is strategy important for content? Well, besides what we said earlier, when you're, or, when you're organized and expect that content is going to be due, you avoid what I call the uh-ohs that lead to poor content creation and delivery. That's the Tuesday morning you come into the office, you haven't made a Facebook post in a little while, and suddenly you feel like you've got to make that post. So what do you do? You scramble for a link. You scramble for something to throw up on the Facebook page. That doesn't work as great. Um, if you're organized and you have a strategy in place and you think ahead that you have to make a post on specific days or times, you tend to plan a little bit more. And we're going to get into that a little later about adding to a calendar. Um, we always suggest people just set up a calendar, even if it's whatever it is, Outlook, Outlook, an iCal, even if it's a paper calendar. Write down that on Tuesday and Thursday are the Facebook post days. Um, that way it's always in front of you and you know you have to come up with good content. You can also post content at optimal times for the best performance by having a strategy. And part of the strategy, which we're going to get into shortly as well, is the analytics. And the analytics will help determine what days and times will work best for you to post. But um, you end up posting content at optimal times based on the analytics in your calendar. And more importantly than anything else about content, there's a little thing called edge rank. And this is basically the formula for edge rank. I'm going to break it down for you. All right, so edge rank is basically an algorithm that Facebook uses. It determines whether or not your content is valuable enough to appear in your fans' home feed. And it's built of three things here, and you don't have to know the, the specific definitions. But affinity is your relationship with a fan, how interactive they are with your content. That's the person who comes back to your Facebook page often. They interact with your page. They have a very high affinity. So they're going to probably see most of your posts that you put up there or all of your posts up there because they're an engaged fan. They're continually there. The weight. And an object, just so you know what an object is, an object is pretty much anything you put up on a Facebook page. And that goes for images and videos hold the most weight. So when you put a video up on your Facebook page or you put a photograph or an image on, those ha have heavy weight. The next most important piece of weight is links. When you put a link up to a newspaper article or you put a link to an online article, anything else like that, those also have about a medium weight. The lowest weight is going to be just a status update. And we always discourage people from just putting up status updates. Status updates get lost in a home feed very quickly because they're not visual. They don't take up a lot of real estate in the home feed. So we always encourage to at least use a link and if possible use a, a video or an image. Now the other part of weight is how people react to it. If someone comments on your post, that has more weight than if they simply like it. And this, is again, is why it's important in your content to have open-ended questions, open-ended conversations, because the more people comment on that post, the more weight it has. If you have a bunch of people who come and just like that post, it doesn't carry as much weight. And then the third part of the uh, algorithm for edge rank is time decay. It's basically the point at which comments and likes cease. Um, and it's usually about a day, day and a half, sometimes two days. Uh, every once in a while you'll get another one you know, popping up a little later. But it's basically the point at which comments and likes cease for uh, an, a little bit of a period. And um, I'm, I apologize not knowing the exact, but I think it's about um, eight hours is when Facebook then determines that the time has decayed on it. All right, some general points about using Facebook, and of course this goes for all social media, is show interest in and listen to others. Um, you do want to go around. You want to comment on other pages. You want to listen to what other people say. You have to show some kind of interest. 
you have to be real, be yourself. Transparency is a large part of what Facebook is and what social platforms are. Uh, it's a trust factor. You be, build trust by being yourself and being real. Take time and do it right. Um, you know, if you're not going to spend time working on Facebook properly or any of these social platforms, it's just simply really not going to give you any kind of ROI or it's not going to give you any kind of value. It takes a little bit of time to do it the right way. And have fun. I mean, social media is a blast. Uh, you know, it's, it's interaction with people. Uh, it, it's not just throwing a newspaper ad out there and hoping somebody calls. It's, it's actual communication between humans. Don't use the platforms to shout your message. Um, you know, if you're just going to be monotonous or you're just going to always continually just shout about who you are and what you do, uh, which goes into the other one underneath it, talk about yourself continually, don't do these things. You turn people off. Um, this is a human engagement platform. It's, I liken it a lot to if people, you know, you go to a chamber of commerce meeting or, or a networking meeting, and there's this one guy who always walks around. He doesn't really get to know you. He just kind of hands you his business card and says, hi, this is who I am, this is what I do, and then kind of walks away from you. Um, don't do that. And the other piece is don't use auto post programs. Uh, programs like Hootsuite and all these other ones are awesome if you use them properly. The problem is we see a lot of people not using them properly. They use them as broadcast mechanisms where they'll send out a tweet and it automatically populates to their Facebook page. And if you see in this screen capture right here, um, this is basically just a push from Twitter. Um, you'll notice absolutely no engagement on this thing at all. All right, so little tips and tricks here. You can always like a page twice. And this is going to be a little confusing. We, we do have a, uh, a video on this on our YouTube channel, so you can always, uh, you know, post up on our Facebook wall or tweet us or in the box here, uh, ask for the link, but we'll get you the link. Um, but you can like a page twice. Once is yourself, which as logged in as William DeRose, you'll see right there, I went to the Valley Chamber of Commerce page, and I posted a hello. Now what I did was I went back to my fan page. I logged in as Talking Finger. I went back to this Valley Chamber page. I liked it again, so I've liked it twice, once with my personal, once with my page, and I post it again. It's imperative that you do like it twice. Um, the first one, when you like it as yourself or as a person, you're giving that page owner a like. When you comment as or you like a page with your, your fan page, in my case here you'll see Talking Finger, I did not give the, fan, the, uh, the page owner another like, but what this allows me to do now is I can now comment on their page as my business. So if you talk about exposure and you go to pages that have thousands of fans and you start commenting and getting engaged in conversations and it's not going there and just posting up a link that's very spammy, which I'm actually going to show you, um, it's engaging. Um, so do like a page twice. Uh, and this is what I was getting into is tag your page on other pages. Don't spam with links. And if you see the example at the top right here, and I blurred a lot of it out just to protect the innocent here, um, these were links that they posted up. Um, you know, they found us on LinkedIn. They came in. They basically posted a link to their Facebook page instead of tagging. And they also posted up a link to an outside website. Um, this went directly into our hidden posts folder on Facebook. Uh, I do check our hidden posts every once in a while just to see who got caught in there, and every day there's one or two in there who uh, posted. The way to actually tag yourself um, so that you don't get trapped in people's hidden posts is, you, you, first of all, you have to like the page that you're going to tag. Then the thing you do is, in the comment or in a text box, you just simply type the at symbol. Then start typing the first couple of letters of the page you want to tag. Now, in this case, you'll see dropping in from at TA. As soon as I did that at TA, a drop-down menu appeared underneath where I started typing, and I can choose talking finger right there. Now, you'll see the clean result is William DeRosa dropping in from talking finger to say hello. That's called a tag, and now that is linkable. So instead of that top example where someone did HTTP, blah, 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 um, they, I simply just tag myself here, and you'll see it's nice and clean, and I won't get caught in spam filters. And we have a video on this as well, or you can always post up on our Facebook page if you have any issues with that. All right, so analytics. You use analytics to redefine the strategy. Analytics tell the story of what you post, the correlations, the virality, and so much more. And one of the reasons you do this is so you can help figure out what days and times your content is going to be most readily received by the audience. An example is a Facebook post. Through analytical discovery, Wednesday seems to have the higher share rate. 
So the strategy redefinition would just be make sure that any posts that need to be actually shared for Wednesday. Now every post needs to be shared, and this is obviously just an example. Um, but this strat the the analytics will bear out exactly what days and times you want to post. So what do you do for the analytics? Well, insights. On your Facebook page is a tab called Insights, and there's a lot to digest. If you're not used to reading analytics, there is a, a wealth of information there that you probably won't understand. But some of the ones that are important, and again, we can always direct you to these, is viral reach is an important one. Viral reach is how far your content is shared by your fans. It, it's basically an indication of how valuable or interesting your posts are. Obviously, if I'm going to share something with my group of friends, it needs to be valuable or interesting to my friends. Um, so it's a good health meter to see what you're doing out there as far as your content. How far is it actually going outside of just the basic fans? And then obviously, Insights has a lot of demographic breakdowns to help target messages. Uh, you know, for example, if your your audience needs to be more female. And remember those, uh, those four definitions we did in the beginning is defining your target audience, and one of them was, say, women. Um, you know that by looking at these demographics if you're actually re reaching your target audience. So if you notice in, you know, in a case that you wanted to target women from 35 to 44, but you're actually only hitting uh, you know, the, the majority of ones that are 25 to whatever, 34, um, or whatever age group, then you know maybe you have to redefine your, your content a little bit to reach that target audience. This is another important one. It's called page posts. And I believe this is uh, as soon as you click on uh, insights, this is one of the ones that come up. And what I want you to do to sort it is go to the virality portion of it, and it's on the far right. And you would simply click on that, and it puts it in virality order from the, uh, the most viral all the way down. Now, this measures what content creates conversation. Um, all these measurements, all these analytics measure specific pieces. There's a lot of overlay between all the analytics, um, but each one has a specific reason for being. And this is a good one to determine what content is actually creating conversation within your fans. Then the other one that's important is external referrers. If you're doing a lot of outside marketing or you're involved in a lot of different uh, places online, this gives you an indication of how traffic is actually being driven to your Facebook page. You'll notice I'm on LinkedIn. I, I use LinkedIn a lot. Um, and we're getting a lot of traffic from LinkedIn from posts I make. So people who have come and liked my page, um, you know, 106 come from in the last, uh, I think this is in the last month if I'm not mistaken, have come from LinkedIn. Talkingfinger.com, our website, you'll notice Pinterest, uh, which is a big up and coming site, uh, that's a good referral piece too. But obviously yours will look a little different and it gives you a good idea where traffic's coming from. Now you can always go deeper with analytics. Um, you, can per you can purchase software or pro versions for page analytics or hire an agency. The programs range in price from anywhere from $25, $30 a month up to, you know, four or $500 a month, depending on how intricate you want to get. But this really kind of digests all your analytics for you and really gives you a good indication of days and times and uh, how many times you should post. Um, the insights will do basically the same thing, but it's a little harder to ascertain if you're not used to analytics. So what this actually does is it actually kind of defines it for you and gives you breakdown charts. Um, so you can always ask us about these type of programs if you want to, if you want some uh, referral sources. All right, so a basic formula for social media ROI. We break it down into two pieces. There's the technical and the people. The dollar investment in hardware is the technical. That's the money you would spend on doing the landing pages, um, installing apps, uh, iframes, the graphic design and branding that would go into your page, all the stuff that goes into the actual page itself. The other part of the, of the, uh, the money or the, the investment in the social media is human investment in time. Now this is the one that's going to, in the long term, cost much more money than the technical investment or the hardware investment. This is the people cur creating and curating content, responding, monitoring, being engaged. This is the long term. And you kind of figure that out by, you know, how many hours per week do we need to spend and how much per hour does this, do these people cost or do your, you know, how much are you worth per hour to do? And then what you can kind of break it down to is total sales and dollars resulting directly from effort. And if you track things and if you use analytics and you, you really stay on top of your game as far as where people came from and where they're going, 
then you can, uh, you can get a really good feel for what your return on this investment is. But, you know, the most important investment on these things, because, you know, social media is just starting to come around where there's actually measurable ROI and people are actually seeing direct sales from it and they're actually able to actually start monitoring the actual dollars that come in. But what you do measure is, and you can't measure, but how do you measure it is create and build personal relationships and people doing business with people they know, the long-term continual engagement, the brand loyalty, the advocacy and cheerleaders, and most importantly, trust. You can't measure these things, but more and more marketing analysts are, are starting to see that you know, things like Facebook and these social platforms, they, they, really, they really prosper in all these different characteristics of really engaging people. And I believe that is it. Um, so any questions you have or anything else like that, feel free to pop it in the text box there. Uh, as well, you can tweet it out. Uh, and just so you know, this uh, presentation will be on SlideShare. I'm going to actually be emailing Gene the link to this. Um, and Eric, you've been uh, monitoring questions. You're all set on your end. Okay. So Gene had sent me some emailed questions in that I'm going to uh, read out here and answer. And uh, you know, if anybody wants to stick around, I'm going to answer a bunch of them right here. Um, you know. Uh, and, of course, if anybody has to leave, go right ahead. You can always ask us questions on our Facebook page, which is down at the bottom there, facebook.com forward slash Talking Finger. And let's go ahead with the questions so far. Um, do you have any tips on how to increase CTR, which is click-through rate, for Facebook campaigns? All campaigns I have run have a 0.02 to 0.03% return. What type of creative have you seen to be most successful in Facebook campaigns, and what is the difference between sponsored stories and Facebook ads? I, um, you know, I said earlier with the ads, targeting to an audience, the more targeted you are, the better results you get. It's as simple as that. Um, the more you can ascertain, and this is why it's so important to sit down and really do those four questions uh, that we started with is defining a target audience. What are their hobbies? What things would your target audience like? Um, and I know some of this stuff is a little difficult to uh, ascertain, but if you do a little market research, you could probably get some of these parameters. Um, but be sure that the wording reflects the targeted audience, speaks to them. Um, if you're going to be, let's, let's put it this way, you're a ski shop and you want to put an ad on Facebook for skiing. Well, in the description, in the title first, to be, first of all, should be looking forward to ski season or something like that so that you're piquing their interest. And then the body of the ad should speak about skiing. Hey, the slopes have full of snow. Come down to our store. We're having a sale. Speak to them in the text. It has to be related to the target. Um, the other thing is with ads to get good click-through rate eventually is sometimes you need to run four or five ads for basically the same exact thing. The difference is each of the four or five ads would have different images and maybe slightly different text or title. And after a few days, you see which one of these four or five ads are performing better. Um, it's called A-B testing. You're throwing these out there and determining which course of action, or in this case, you know, I like to do A, B, C, D, E. Um, but you can even just do two ads uh, simultaneously that are similar. And see which one is getting a better response, and then drop the other ad and run the one that's working. Put a little more money towards that one. Um, and that's really the best way to do it. Um, and as far as sponsored stories and Facebook ads, Facebook ads are just the general ads that you, you typically see. They're the ones, uh, it's basically just a little commercial type thing. Sponsored stories always include either a story about the viewer's friends or a story about your Facebook page posts. Um, and they're also typically a little bit more successful because it's almost like a, a, a referral for that ad. And you can see them on your page. I mean, if you click through your home feed, you'll see them every once in a while. You'll see your friend likes this page. Um, and that's basically what a sponsor story is. Or you will sometimes see an actual wall post in an ad where it's actually an extraction from somebody's fan page into an ad. I hope that answers your question. Uh, I am from a radio. So the next question. I am from a radio station, and we would like to learn more about how to take full advantage of what Facebook has to offer for contests. Um, contests on Facebook are great. We run them. Um, the, the great thing is you do collect a lot of email addresses. Um, it, it piques a lot of interest. And keep in mind something about contests. They help with edge rank in the beginning because you're boosting interactions. But long term it doesn't do that much, and sometimes it can actually hurt you a little. And think about it this way. Um, sometimes 
people have to like a page, first of all, to enter a contest. Um, so they may have absolutely no vested interest in actually uh, engaging with your page long term. They may like your page just to get the con to enter the contest, and hopefully, if realistically, if they're not going to engage with you, they're going to unlike you after. I know that sounds a little a little silly, um, but having a lot of fans. One of the parts of an edge rank that um, we didn't really go into is that. There's also a, a background proportion of how many people like your page, say 3,000 people like your page, uh, versus how many people actually engage with it. Um, so you almost don't mind them unliking you. Um, now, as far as contest, um, be aware you do have to use a third-party application. You cannot have a contest on your wall. Um, Facebook has shut down pages uh, here and there about it, but I, I know what's going to be end of, end of the what's going to end up happening, and they've spelled it out before, that um, they're going to get a little more strict on people doing contests on walls. Uh, they're going to be a little more strict on people using personal profiles for business, things like that, because they're all privacy. Um, but use a third-party application. There's a company called North Social that has some good ones. Um, they're usually around $20 a month. Um, but you do have to be somewhat technically savvy to build it, because there is a, a back-end email database that you have to build, and you have to have some decent um, you know, graphic skills. Um, or you can hire an agency to do it for you. You know, we build contest pages for people, and there's other agencies or a PR. Or, you know, any of these agencies, they may be able to build it for you. All right. So the next question, it's an important one, uh, and we kind of went over it, but I can extrapolate a little. It's um, edge rank ways posts in several ways. Please talk a bit about this and how it affects future posts appearance on fans' walls and tickers. Um, I covered edge rank a, a, a little bit before, but just know what it affects the home feed, not the ticker. As far as I've seen a red, post will always appear in a ticker. Edge rank doesn't uh, keep you, but think about what the ticker is. It's such a short span of time. It's literally minutes. When something appears in a ticker, it's, it's alive for just minutes. Really, that's it. Um, it more affects the home feed of your fans feed of your fans. And you can just look at yourself. When you go and look, go click on your, your home feed, you'll see that it's defaulted to top stories. And if your edge rank is high, remember your affinity with people, if your edge rank is high with the affinity, you will show up in those top posts. If it's not, the people would actually have to proactively click on that sort tab to drop down to have most recent. And then you're still not really guaranteed to be in there. Um, but if your edge rank is low, you certainly won't be in the top posts. Um, and that's really, you know, that's really all there is to edge rank and really just the way to circumvent it to get around is create good content and get people engaged. All right, next question here. I'd like him to go into details about buying Facebook. Since I don't do it, I'm looking for help in the area of how one goes about it. And I'm assuming Facebook ads. Um, it's really simple. Scroll down to the bottom of any page pretty much, and you'll see, uh, I think it's the second one, and you'll see a, um, a little link that says advertising. Just simply click on a link, and you're going to need to set up an account. You'll have to give them a credit card and all these things. Um, that's basically how you get started. Um, there's a time constriction here to go into too much detail, but that's how you would at least get it going. And then you can always post up on our wall or call us or something like that to ask anything further. Or Facebook actually does have some pretty good tutorials uh, on this stuff as well about setting up ads. You just have to find them. But, um, hey, but they do have some good tutorials if you look through it. All right, so our next question, how can we keep Facebook from hiding us from inactive followers? Um, edge rank, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Uh, create good, valuable content, be engaged, be active, just be social, and you won't really have to worry about being hidden. Um, obviously, there's always going to be fans, and every there's, it doesn't matter what page you are, there's always going to be fans that come and like your page and never come back, uh, who enter a contest and never come back. There's nothing you can do about it. And Edge Rank understands that. Um, the formula isn't so harsh that um, you know if you have a decent page going that it's going to hide stuff. Um, but it's going to, from people, honestly, who are inactive with your page, who came and liked you once and then never came back, they're not going to see your post. I mean, there's just nothing you really can do about it. All right, next, next uh, question here. How to put in different tabs and add content? Um, this is a really complex, and it could also be really simple depending on the tab and app. Um, it may be too difficult to explain in a short time, um, but there's a, a, there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, but the best thing to do is really call us on something like this because um, there's so many available for so many different applications. And unless you really are pretty technically savvy, a lot of them are a little difficult to get um, 
placed onto your page. There's some basic ones that we can walk you to, um, but most of them are complex. There's a, a bunch of back end things you have to do with your page uh, to allow it to actually show, how to customize it, things like that. So it's a little bit of a complex thing to answer on a, on a webinar. Um, all right, so what is the best way to, next question, what is the best way to include Facebook in media plans for local advertisers who use online display but are not heavily invested in social media? Um, this is a little am ambiguous for heavily invested. Um, one of the things about social media, it really only works if you put time into it. It really can't be just a landing ground for uh, online advertising. You can't just put banner ads up and say go to our Facebook page and expect people when they get there just to suddenly engage with you if you're not going to spend the time doing it. Um, it. It can't simply be a place for them to go. Unless you're a major brand, I mean, the major brands get away with it. I mean, you know, so many people like Coke just because they're Coke. Um, and, you know, they don't really engage in them, but they have that power. Uh, all, all the rest of us, all the small business owners, really have to work at it a bit. I, I'd honestly say unless they decide to make it more than just ancillary, it's kind of a waste of time to, to handle Facebook and handle social platforms because uh, it's simply just not going to work. What will end up happening is if you have banner ads or things like that driving people to your Facebook page and they get there and there's really no engagement, your edge rank's going to hide it from them anyway. So unless you put the time into it, um, it's probably better off sending people to the website or something rather than a social platform. Um, okay, next question. What is the best way to get people to like our Facebook page? It seems as if everyone has the same old offers. What are the rules for using Facebook logo and advertising? Okay, so the best way to get people to like your, fa your Facebook page. Um, there is no one or best way. It kind of is based on your strategy. And remember when we outlined your target audience, your goals, things like that. Um, but I'll give you an example. If you use LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn often, drive people there and give them something when they arrive. In other words, um, you know, if there's a conversation going on LinkedIn about, you know, I'll give us as an example, social media marketing. Uh, I'm on some of the uh, nonprofit you know, social media for nonprofit. Well, you know, I create slide shares. I create things a lot of times. So when I go to to LinkedIn and I get involved in these conversations, I'll get involved in the conversation and they'll say, you know, I happen to have a, a slide share, so I drive them there. Or uh, there happens to be a conversation on our Facebook page going on about this right now. Um, but drive people to it, but give them a reason to get there. The other thing is be active on other pages and comment as your page. Remember earlier I showed you like a page twice, once with your personal profile, once, once with your page. When you like it as a page, you can comment as your page. So go around on other pages and comment. Um, and that doesn't mean like I, you know, I showed you the spammer. Don't go to other pages and just start throwing stuff up about you. Look for something interesting they have said and get involved in a conversation. Organically, you're showing yourself to their fan base basically. Um, another good place to uh, get people to like your page is go to a local Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. Uh, you know, I showed you earlier the Greater Valley Chamber, which is one of the local chambers. But most places, uh, most cities, most areas have a local Chamber of Commerce that has a Facebook page. Dive into their page. That way you can also get some local business and connect with other uh, local people. So not only are you working on a social platform, but it could turn into you know, more of a real-life meeting and stuff as well. Uh, we have a lot of videos on this, by the way. Um, the other thing is don't get hung up on likes. You know, people always ask us, I need more likes, I need more likes. Um, it's a kind of simple number that doesn't really mean a ton. What you really care about is engagement because edge rank, like I said, it, it determines your, your likes uh, versus how many people are engaged. But more importantly, it determines the engagement within your content. And this kind of determines your, se your success. Um, now, likes are great, of course, because every time someone likes your page, their friends are notified. Uh, so that's obviously great. But that can't be denied. But if you make your page more interesting and fun and informational, the likes come. And don't forget, when someone likes your page, uh, it's a one hit. In other words, I like somebody's page, all my friends are notified once. But if I come back and I continually engage with your page and like things and comment, I continually notify my friends. So while that initial like is great because it notifies my friends, by me continuing to engage, I'm continually um, notifying my friends. So, um, I mean, that's what it comes down to in the long term. 
Another question, I have a bank client that wants to get involved in social media. I would like to give them the best advice on how to make their Facebook account pertinent to their customers. What will make their customers visit their Facebook page? Uh, banks and financial institutions, very difficult. Um, the few I've seen make uh, work where they made it fun, jokes, cute pets, things like that. Um, some basic information like mortgage rates of downs or a link to newspaper, but that's about it. Um, and we're almost out of time here, so i got one more question. What are the top things Facebook users want from companies, be businesses they like? What are the optimum number of posts for a company to make each day? And what topics or users are better suited? So this is the last question. I'll answer it this way. Um, the top three things really, get, again, depends on your audience. Ask them. Uh, questions rock. Ask them what they want to hear about. Um, think about what your audience wants to hear from you. Um, this is why understanding your audience is important and creating a strategy. It helps you develop content. In general, if you, if you need it nailed down, people really want information, entertainment, and they want a resource. Um, I hate to sound like a broken record, but analytics will tell you in time how many times to post and uh, what days and times. Uh, we typically tell new pages to post every other day at most. Um, once a day if they really have a lot to say and they're really informational, but it's usually every other day. Some are only twice a week. Um, and really, again, it, it'll, de it'll depend on the, uh, the analytics in the end. And uh, Gene, I think I'm all set for right now. And if anybody else has any other questions, uh, like I said, feel free to come to our Facebook page. We love having questions posted up on our wall, facebook.com forward slash talking finger. And I'm going to send Gene the link to this slide share later. And Gene, thanks. I'm all set. Bill, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, walk through the presentation and also answer all those questions.